Welcome to the WIHS Journal. On today's broadcast, I'll continue my conversation from yesterday, uh, talking with Barry Malazzo about his book, All the King's Horses. We'll start where we left off from yesterday's conversation. I know that your son was uh, diagnosed and, you know, even now, even today, dealing with, um, you know, some of his struggles on a daily basis. I know that you had a problem in your marriage and all this stuff that was happening. And how do you think that God really manifested his presence in your life when all this was going on? Well, great question. And by the way, it, it's it's Barry Malazzo. The old country would say Milazzo. <laughs> <laughs> and Porticelli, you should know that. So it's, it, it's great. But um, so, um, yeah, how did he manifest himself? I guess, you know, Anissa... I look again to Paul, and actually, my book, All the King's Horses, and I love that subtitle, and thank you for mentioning it, Finding Purpose and Hope in Brokenness and in Impossibility. Uh, everybody is broken in their own way. Everybody's facing impossibility in their own way. And All the King's Horses came from the Humpty Dumpty rhyme. You know, things can be great. You could fall down from that wall in a millisecond. You could be, your life and your dreams could be, could, could be shattered to smithereens. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't, didn't have a prayer of putting a situation like that back together again. And he doesn't for our, worldly resources can't do that for us too. When things go so wrong and get so, uh, such a train wreck. And that's what my life was, a train wreck. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, as, as one thing led to another, I became a single father. My wife, my wife uh, simply decided to move on. And I was left with three children. Then I got sick. <laughs> and then I was trying to keep up. I had a multiply handicapped kid who couldn't toilet himself, couldn't tie his shoes, couldn't cut his food. I still do many of those things through the day for him. But, you know, what am I going to do? I, I, was, I was all over the place trying to keep up. And uh, I realized that if, if the Lord wasn't real, I'd, I'd be finished. Absolutely. You know, and so uh, what I realized in, in, in pertaining to your question is it was in my weakness that I found strength. Mm. Paul begged the Lord three times to take away his thorn, and the answer was no. And and the reason was because my power will may be, be made perfect in your weakness. And I love Paul's great response to that. He said, I am well content, therefore, with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions and with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So I, it's again and again saying, Lord, I can't take, you know, I can't take this situation. I can't take caring for my son. I can't take being a single parent. Uh, I later got sick and suffered liver disease and a blood disease. I was carried out of my home on a stretcher. I, I'm so lucky to be speaking to you or to anyone today in this. Uh, mm. But the Lord has seen fit to keep me here. And, uh, you know, I I know that um, uh, if he gives me the opportunity, uh, my mission statement today is from Acts twenty twenty four. I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself so that I may finish my course and the ministry I've received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. And that's it. If he gives me 30 more years, that's the mission. If he gives me 30 more days, that's the mission. But I'm so thankful to, to be here and to be about his business. Wow, your story is um, amazing. Just, you know, your perseverance and just um, your passion for the Lord is just amazing. Because, you know, most people, you know, you go through adversity and they, they want to turn away. But in your case, it was kind of like the driving, the pivotal point for you to um, be on your knees. So for our listeners who are tuning in right now and, and they hear you, and what would you like them to know about this book? If you wanted one thing for any listeners to take away from this book, what would you like them to take away from it? I would like them to know that we were created by him and for him, the him in in uh, Colossians 1, 16 and 17, is Jesus. And the next verse says, and in him all things hold together. He controls everything. Even our lives when they become a train wreck, even when our dreams are gone and so shattered, he will give us a new dream. He's, if he controls every inch of this universe, and he does, he can handle our broken dreams. He can handle our broken lives. 
And maybe things look different than what we think we want, and maybe things look different than what we expected them to be. But if his purpose is playing out in our lives, if he's being glorified, if we have hope because of who he is, and eternally we have hope. Um, you know, one thing that I'd just like to mention, and this is that Bryson did walk. He wasn't going to walk. He wasn't going to speak. He walked at 10 years old, but he did it through that word perseverance that you mentioned. Thousands of hours of torturous repetition. Wow. You know, faith just doesn't sit back and do nothing. Uh, I love this statement uh, from Robert A. Cook, one of the heroes of the faith for me when I was growing up. He said, faith trusts in God and then does what it can in the face of impossibility. Don't give up. Trust him first. That's the proper order. Do what you can. He's with you. And after thousands of hours of torturous repetition, Bryson did walk at 10 years old. Praise God. It's not perfect. To this day, he still limps. He's still got cerebral palsy, but he speaks. Mm. And, you know, you'd know in about 10 seconds of conversation with him that you're speaking to a child. But Jesus has got the answer to that, too. He said, you know, you must become like a little child to enter the kingdom of God. So, And, and my little child, who's 33 years old now, knows that. And he also knows that um, our citizenship is in heaven. Amen. And, from which, and he knows that he'll transform the, st- the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has to subject all things to himself. That's Philippians uh, 3, 20 and 21, one of Bryson's favorite verses to this day. He knows he'll jump higher. You know, how much better a deal can we, it's, it's, it's amazing what he's done for us by his blood. Amen. We're just uh, pilgrims uh, passing through. Amen. Oh, as, amen to that. As answer. scripture says. So Barry uh, Malazzo um, from New Jersey. For our listeners, would you say this book would be best? Um, somebody who has someone who has a physical disability or anybody uh, can be blessed by this. I would say anybody. And if you look on Amazon where I direct people to buy it, and it's called All the King's Horses, Finding Purpose and Hope in Brokenness and Impossibility. Uh, there's, you know, three dozen or plus reviews on there, and it's people who have brokenness of all kinds. Amen. Well, Barry, thank you so much for sharing your story about uh, Bryson, um, the stuff that he's endured and enduring now. What kind of uh, future aspirations? I know God says he'll always give us the desires of our heart. Uh, Psalm 37, verse 4. What is your future aspirations? You know, that is, that's a good question. I, I don't know if I've had as good an answer to it, except I intend to you know, I mentioned before Acts twenty twenty four. I, I do not consider my life of any account as due to myself, so that I may finish my course and the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. Half my ministry, and I work out of my home in a in a nice home office that I have, is, is taking care of my son. He is battling potential blindness. So the story, just because I wrote a book, things don't ease up sometimes. It's a fearful situation, but the Lord is the answer to it. If I didn't believe that, I would have given up so long ago. And I just remind people, do not rely on yourselves, rely on Him. And through God's Word, which is so powerful as His Spirit touches His Word, people, they lift their eyes to the Savior. I know they can go on. So I'm a counselor now. I speak. An important aspect of my ministry, Anissa, is waking Bryson up every morning, reading him from the Jesus Storybook Bible, because he I'm his Bible. He can't read his own Bible, but he loves the story of Jesus and the story of hope. And to keep, uh, you know, to keep him uh, living a life that uh, is hopeful for him. And that's like carrying uh, another human being on your back sometime. But that's why I lean on his grace very heavily to this day. And that's what I want to continue to do. Amen. So we heard so much about your story and about your son. Um, thank you so much for sharing your heart for our listeners. Maybe if you want to provide, do you have a website or a phone number if listeners oh, can you. find yes. out more yes. about you? We have a lot of teaching on my website, which is a very simple website, but it's allthekingshorsesministry.com. You need to reword, remember that word ministry. Allthekingshorsesministry.com. No spaces. You can see more about my ministry. You can actually see some clips of Bryson and hit a YouTube uh, button and see in five minutes a wonderful five-minute depiction of what he's been through for the past three decades. Someone gifted that to my ministry. The website is allthekingshorsesministry.com. Once again on the broadcast with us was Barry Malazzo, the author of All the King's Horses, Finding Purpose and Hope in Brokenness and Possibility. 
For these last two days, Barry shared the story of how God used adversity to mold him and shape him to be like Jesus. Today concludes the second part of this broadcast. For more details, call WIHS. Our phone number is 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff and management of the station. I'm Anissa Porticelli. The WIHS Journal is public affairs from WIHS Middletown, 